What's up everyone, in this video I want to talk about vocal chains, specifically I want to talk about how you can make this. I just want to make the coterie pop, make my vocals pop, like I want to drop, yeah, become this. I just wanna make it over the top No one's gonna stop me, probably, yeah I just wanna make it loud and clear yeah, What the crowd to cheer When the drown and tears, yeah I just wanna make the sound of the year Something's gonna be floating here, no I just love these kind of vocal chains when you have a million effects and it just completely 180s the vocals into something that was less than mediocre into something that is just purely juicy and has so much laser flavor in it that you just <clears throat> I think I could still squeeze a little bit more out of it but at this point I found it good enough to make a little bit of a video about it maybe a little bit as an inspiration to all of the producers out there who might not be the best vocalists ever but still feel like they could do more about the vocals than just hoping that they at some point will have the patience to learn more vocal skills because a lot of times people claim you need to have good vocal skills to make good music and yeah to some extent i guess that's right but you can also just be really good at effects and that's also cool that's just my point so let's get started right so here we have a layer and one of them is just the dry signal with a little bit of gain and the other one is this effect chain so obviously i only set up this layer because of this video so let's not talk about this chain but only about this one so let's deactivate most of the effects and just Talk about the effect that I started with. I started with the effect Kirui, and I know that I wrote this thing in C major, so I can just type in the C major scale here and just play around with Kirui and see what happens. I just wanna make the coterie pop, make my vocals pop like a water drop, yeah. I just wanna make it over the top. So this was just the transpose parameter and I often use it to transpose myself an octave up and then play around with the formant shift to kind of make my vocals go into a certain texture, I don't know. I just wanna make the coterie pop, make my vocals pop like a water drop, yeah. I just wanna make it over the top. Now by default, Kirui tries to preserve your formants. And yeah, it's not like super successful in doing that, but you can turn it off by clicking on this thing and then it will actually have the formant that a vocal would have if you octave it up, which sounds much more Mickey Mousey. I just wanna make the coterie pop. I often like to do it like that because then I have more of a feeling of control that I can select my flavor myself and that it's not just the result of some automatic mode that tries to, you know, fit my vocals into being as clean as possible. I just wanna make the coterie pop, make my vocals pop like a water drop, yeah. I just wanna make it over the top. So this is the kind of setting that I often like to use because when I pitch myself up an octave, then I'm out of the range of most instruments and sometimes the vocals are already capable of finding their place in the mix better than without that way. Obviously that's not a solution if you really want your vocals to be true to your natural vocals, but I don't care. I just want to find something that sounds cool for my ears. And I did that. Now one cool thing about Kirui is that you can also use the second voice by just turning up its volume, having both an octave up but on different formants, and then hard panning this thing to get a really wide sound. I just wanna make the coterie pop, make my vocals pop like a water drop, yeah. I just wanna make it over the top, no one's gonna stop me, probably, yeah. I just wanna make it. And you can even add a little bit of fine tuning to give it a little bit more of a corrosive vibe. And yeah, as you can imagine, this is also mono compatible. I just wanna make for coterie pop, make my vocals pop. So it's a really good technique, especially for background vocals. Now that I said this, I can finally go into my actual effect chain. So here is an FX layer and in this effects layer, we have another layer. And this layer is separated into mono and white and the mono layer just has um, a Kirui instance that is in the middle of the stereo field and the other layer has a Kirui instance that hard pans two vocals to the side and together they are like this. 
I guess that's how I would visualize it. Yeah, and some custom settings on each. I don't have to go into detail because you always have to do this by feeling. I cannot tell you anything about how you should do that. It's basically the same effects after Kirui on both sides as well, like just an EQ that makes sure that the sweet spot is clearly defined. So here is the mono part. I wanted the low mids to be pretty much centered and then I wanted the rest of the spectrum to be more dominated by the wider sound. And at the end I always have a bit of a compressor to make sure that things are not going too crazy in the dynamics. But it's just one of these compressor patches that only hits on certain specifically loud syllables just to really control things with a lot of look ahead to make sure that it also deals with the sibilance right in time. Yeah, just transient control basically. And yeah, that's how these two layers sound together. I just wanna make the corner we pop, make my vocals pop like a water drop, yeah. So then, after this layer of Kirui's, I have a bit of compression to glue them together. Again, a very subtle setting, because I know when I set these things up, I know that there will be more compressors, especially when I add layers, then after each layer is consolidated together again, there has to be something that glues the things together. And only that way you get a very coherent sound in the end, despite splitting up your signal in a million ways. That's why I don't go too crazy in each instance instance of the compressors, because otherwise it would go too hard too early. Now I have to say, sometimes there are exceptions, like here there is a pretty strong upwards compressor going on. It really adds some important body to the vocals, that the vocals desperately need to even be loud enough in the mix. <laughs> I think what this especially does is on the wider part of the signal, it kind of brings it more to the foreground, it gives it more bite, which is cool. I like that this thing is an upwards compressor without multiband, because usually a lot of people who use upwards compression only do that passively without even using what upwards compression is, because they instantiate ODT. But when you know what upwards compression is, and you know you currently don't need multiband, then you can just use this plugin, which is cool. However, what upwards compression also does is it brings up the room noise. And since I'm sitting here in a living room, not a professional studio, I do have room noise with this condenser mic. I could have used a dynamic mic, but I haven't. So I'm using Acon Digital Deverberate to make sure that this upwards compressor is not going too crazy on the noise floor of the vocals. And yeah, that's why I didn't explain this effect before I explained the FX layer, even though it comes before that, because you have to know this context to understand that. Can you hear how much it cleans up the vocals? You know, sometimes you can do similar things by instantiating an expander, like I often do in my videos, but on vocals it often doesn't work very well. Yeah, because vocals are too dynamic, you cannot find a really good setting that just works for every single syllable. So I don't even bother with that. Instead, just use a deverberating plugin like Akin Digital Deverberate. So the next thing that we have here, or actually the previous thing in terms of signal flow, is Sylph 2, because Kirui is just an effect that always goes a little bit too crazy on the high end, can make the sibilance even more harsh than it was before. So here is a really hard setting on Soof to make sure that there isn't even a lot of sibilance to begin with, so that when Kirui enhances that for some reason, it just becomes normal. I just wanna make the Kirui pop, make my vocals pop like a water drop, yeah. I just wanna make it over the top, no one's gonna stop me, probably. Yeah. Even though I'm still undecided if this is not a little bit too hard. But yeah, let's just put that to another day. For now, I just want to explain how this effect chain works right now. Let's go on with Melodyne, which is the first effect in the chain. Yeah. 
So you can see this is mostly just straight on the point. It's not that some of the notes are like a little bit more natural in the middle between notes like a lot of people do it with Melodyne. And that's not because I say you have to go so hard on Melodyne, but my musical style just asks for it because I always have these electronic beats where everything is very tight and not a lot of humanized timings going on and stuff like that. So it only makes sense that the vocals are just as tight. At least to me that makes sense. It Oh, it was always like that and I like that. Let me quickly sum up my workflow. So I transfer the vocal. I just wanna make the code a For now, I will just use this very short sequence. Then what I always do is I pitch it as hard as I can and I remove the vibrato. I also add a little bit of volume to the quietest notes. And then I can already hear very well which notes are not quite where they should be. I just wanna make the I just wanna so this is something that I actually didn't hear without tuning it that hard. So even if I plan to back off from this hard tuning at some point, I always start with a hard tuning so that I just have this overview. Okay, nice. Next thing that I always do in my vocals is bringing back some of the vibrato. And for this workflow, I like to keep my loops really short so that I can focus on individual syllables. Now this note is a great example for a note where I don't like the original vibrato that I sung, so I just flatten it as hard as I can. So this little bump here inspired me to cut this into multiple pieces manually so that I can put this up here and really emphasize on the vocal ornament that could be created from this vibrato. And this is being picked up by these Karoui instances as well. If you use autotune, it can also be picked up. Most vocal tuning plugins are kind of too slow for that, but autotune is really good at that and Karoui is even better at picking up extremely fast vocal ornaments. Uh, that's also the reason why I use Karoui here and not autotune, because I wanted it to be really fast and tight. If you do want to soften it up, you can just use this mode a little bit. This note is a great example for a note where I do like the vibrato a lot and I especially like how it slides down from the last note and you can really hear that it kind of adds something to the vocal that the vocal actually needs. Now now the next step that I always go through when I have done this for the whole vocal part usually is to do the same thing again, but this time for the timing. So I would go into the timing mode and just listen very closely to the relationship between the drums and the vocals. Sometimes I solo the drums and the vocals so that I can really focus on that. So yeah, at this point of melodyning vocals, it really becomes a strong sound design focus because I'm listening to individual syllables like this and even listening very closely to just what effect it has to slightly change the timing of one of these micro notes that you wouldn't even perceive as an individual note if a vocal performance just had a vibrato like this naturally. And yeah, I do that for the entire vocal take and then I'm happy with that. So let's activate my results again. 
Now, you might have noticed that there is an FX layer here, which has two layers, and one of them is called low plus mid, and the other one is called high end. And you have already met the low and mid layer, because that's the one where I have all of the Kirui instances in. And you might be wondering why there is even a distinction between low mid and high end. And you might be wondering why I didn't use the multiband split for that, since it basically does exactly what this layer describes to do. I can already answer that. I just want to have unique control on the cutoff of each of the layers, because sometimes that's important for shaping the sound. So I always start these layers with the filter that I use to define the crossover frequency from this side of the band. And of course, you have to use linear phase for that and everything else just doesn't matter. You can try different slopes, different frequencies, different cue bumps. I won't tell you what to do there, you can figure that out yourself. Anyway, the rest of the high-end chain Here we have a little bit of an expander, which is acting really hard on these high-end sounds. And then we have an upwards compressor and a little bit of downwards compression as well. So here we have the same problem that I described earlier where the solution was to actually use the verberate, but this time the solution was to use the expander, even though before I said that it doesn't work on vocals, but that was a little bit too generalized. It does work on vocals, but only works very well on the sibilance of vocals, in my opinion. When you only have the sibilance isolated, then you can use an expander to, you know, make sure that there is a little bit of space in between the sibilance noises. Once you have enhanced this space you can add upwards compression to add some body to the sibilance to make it strong enough against this crazy stuff. So at this point of the chain, it is all about post-processing what has already happened. Of course, the first reasonable thing to do there is to just add a little bit of compression. Just cut the peaks a little bit. It doesn't have to go too crazy. I mean, the only thing here that is a little bit special is that I use a pre-EQ on the sidechain input to make sure that it reacts a little bit more on the high end of the vocals, because sometimes I feel like that gives vocal take a little bit more energy. And then we have this FX layer. But I will first of all only explain what's going on in this layer, which is Cabinetron. <laughs> You might be wondering, what the fuck is he doing? Why is he destroying this entire vocal sound that he came up with, with an effect that removes almost the entire high end and just makes it super muddy? If you think that as well, then yeah, I, I do I do get you, because otherwise I wouldn't have mentioned it now. But there is a good reason for that. I mean, listen to this. I just wanna make a total repop, make my vocals pop like a water drop, yeah. I just wanna make it over the top. I think if there's one thing that cabinet simulators or other convolvers are really good at, it is putting things into a new atmosphere, adding something to the sound that enhances the sweet spot. And of course, the speech intelligibility can suffer from that, but it is still important that your sounds are fundamentally going into the right direction. And that's what cabinet simulators are meant for in the context of vocals and in many other contexts. Still, we want to get back the high end. So we are using this technique where you have another layer and then used a time shift module to find a phasing pattern that actually fits to this combination of an impulse response and the dry signal. One thing I would like to mention here really quickly for the developers of Cabinetron, it would be kind of cool if it was possible to change the phase of the dry signal in this plugin as well by just adding a clean layer without an impulse response and turning the phase while dry is turned up completely. That would be pretty cool. It isn't possible though. That's why I use a time shift module in Bitwig. Ah, 
shit, I forgot about an important thing to mention. My Kiro shake up button. Whenever I reopen my project, I should always press it once and then let go of it again. The reason for that is because Kiroi can forgot its state. If you're using a different DAW than Bitwig that doesn't have this project-wide modulation system, then you might be in trouble if you use Kiroi and don't bounce your audio files immediately when you are happy with the take, just so that you know. I'm recommending this plugin even though it has this flaw. So one thing you can do if you don't have Bitwig is you can go into each of your Kiroi instances and manually scroll wheel your parameters to the next value and then back, because this consistently brings you back to your last setting. And I think it is just these four parameters, the form and shifts and the retune thingies that are not restored perfectly and everything else is restored perfectly as far as I know. So you just go into all of your instances and do that like this. But I don't need that because I have the Kiro shake up button which modulates them to 100% and back for me. And then I get my sound. Now we actually hear the sound as it was intended. But finally, all of the effects that I just explained still made sense, even though we had a different Kiroi setting. It just started to feel weird at this point, and then I remembered, okay, Kiro shake up. Now, there was one final step, which is using Saturn to, yeah, I, I don't know, like finalize the sound, to really glue the different parts of the spectrum together. My Saturn workflow works a little bit like this. I make an instance of Saturn and I just try to go as hard as I can. And then I try the different modes that might make sense. There are not a lot of modes that can make sense. Clean tube and warm tube often make sense. Broken tube is too crazy. Clean tape and warm tape often makes sense. Old tape is also too crazy, but sometimes it makes sense in the high end to soften things up. And there are a bunch of amps which rarely make sense unless you play the guitar maybe. And then there is a bunch of stuff that very rarely makes sense. It is for experimental stuff basically. So this is the useful stuff up here. I really like how this is sorted by the way. Usually I don't like drop down menus, but this one, it really sticks to me. So when I afford something that I like, I back off the drive. And now the thing is, using this in single band adds a lot of intermodulation artifacts, which make it sound like it is pulling on the sound rather than enhancing it in some cool way. So that's why this is a multiband effect. So you try to figure out a crossover frequency that sounds nice with this exact setting. Now it copied the drive and the type to both bands and you can figure out a cool setting. For example, you could decide for something like, okay, I want to have the fundamental frequency of the vocals isolated, which is the case now. You can often turn up distortion harder after you have multiband split it, because obviously there is less intermodulation artifacts, so you can push things harder before they become ugly. As you can see, sometimes you can even try other types then, because now that it doesn't have to distort the entire vocal anymore, you can, you know, find a type that really fits to this specific part of the vocal. Then you can go in it and you would just keep on doing this, going upwards until you have reached the uppest high end. tube can sometimes be really nice because it just completely smashes all transients and all of the harshness and just replaces it with some sort of noise. Oftentimes it is a little bit too extreme though even if you back it off. So alternatively if you want to have something very different but useful you can use old tape. But obviously that sounds very muffled, so you can dial in some of the EQ. Yeah, 
yeah, that's what my Saturn workflow is like. And that's why my vocals sound like this. Editing vocals really hard is one of my favorite things to do when I make music and it's really unfortunate that I already have the chance to work with vocals because I don't often feel like writing lyrics or recording something and it's really become an exception that I can do that and every time I do it I remember how much fun it is and I would love to do that every day but even though I'm kind of out of practice at doing that I still just did this which is pretty cool so I wanted to make a video about it and yeah if anyone out there feels like um, they just want to enhance their vocal takes, even though it might not be Ariana Grande style vocal takes or something, that you can just leave dry and it still sounds awesome for some people. I don't like Ariana Grande, but you know, for some people, um, then you can use just an incredibly huge effect chain. And at some point it will fall into place in its own way. Just don't hesitate, just try different things just be adventurous about it and I'm pretty sure you will find something that will surprise you and that will leave you in awe when you A-B it with the dry vocals.